Welcome to another special edition of Everyone Hates Cleveland, the podcast. I am your host, Jim Pete. Today, joined once again by Jake Burns, who is now taking over EHC from Mike Hattery, who got taken over by Gage Will, who backed out tonight. Jake, this is you're my new co-host. Hey, man, I'm into it. If we can get Star Wars and the Browns on a, on a, on a pod as frequently as we can, I'll be here every week. I'm your co-star. <laughs> We keep saying Star Wars and the Browns. <laughs> I don't know. We haven't done a Browns yet, but I, I'm hoping. I'm hoping for tonight. I'm hoping for tonight. Of course, it's quarter after seven. Our time is limited, so let's see where this takes us. <laughs> um, so tonight, um, of course, our last podcast, Jake and I sat down and talked about the Last Jedi. Uh, I really quickly, uh, Jake, before we get into the real meaning of this podcast, and Jake and I, in about two minutes, are going to start talking about all of the Star Wars flicks, and we're going to rank them from nine all the way up to number one, and however long that takes. But Jake, since the last time we've podcasted, you went and saw it a second time. We're now both members of the two-time club. Uh, what are your thoughts? It was just, it was better the second time. I had those nitpicky things that we talked about mm -hmm. that I thought could have been done better. But the second time, for some reason, there was just a little bit of peace when I was watching it, just enjoyed it more. Um, appreciated them taking different angles on things that they haven't done, the unpredictability that you come to appreciate. Because you thought about The Force Awakens, it, it felt very predictable. This one, this one, in a way, as we've talked about, wasn't predictable, and that was the beautiful part. I just, for some reason, I enjoyed it. I hold, hold, up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. My, my, wife, my wife is coming home. Don't worry, I'll cut all this out. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> No, it's fine. It's fine, James. James, can you go open the door and see if they're out there? Oh, they're not here? Oh, okay. Okay. Um, you can put them in the cage. All right, man. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, you're good. You're good. Tell me, all right. Um, all right. Go ahead. Wait. Ava. Come on. All right. They're at the Hallmark store. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's see. You were, I, I don't know. We'll just start mixing it together. Um, you were in the middle of talking about The Last Jedi. I don't, like, sorry. Yeah, round I got... two. I'll okay. In. So, yeah. All I right, thought, go for it. I thought round two um, enjoyed it more. Uh, maybe it was because I wasn't expecting anything crazy like I was the first time in terms of unpredictability. Um, I, I thought I thought I just enjoyed the risks they took um, in accordance to what I what I remembered trying to piece it all together. If that makes sense, yeah. I I, I just I, I the, the 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 part about Luke came together the second time more in terms of I understood some things. I understood why he came to to pass at the end. I understood that part in a way I didn't the first time. Um, just chills the second time during the during the. Snoke scene in, in his in his chambers. I thought I think that we'll get into it, but one of the probably the single coolest Star Wars scene I've ever seen. Uh, obviously debatable, but films, <laughs> uh, just the whole thing. It felt right. It felt more right the second time, which is a little bit unnatural with movies. But um, no, I have I a new word. I, more. I, ha I have a new word for that movie, and, and um, I always gauge movies on how I feel about them days and weeks later. And having seen it um, now weeks ago. Uh, I, I think the word that comes into mind, and this is not in a bad way. Sometimes you say this, and it's in a bad way. Is ambitious. Yeah. It feels like he. It feels like he was going for a lot, and I thought that he handled the ambition, the several storylines that he played out. I thought he handled it really well. When we yeah. get to the end, when we get from the shift from that scene that you were just talking about um, to um, the end, con the, the end conflict, um, a lot of people I think that maybe haven't seen Star Wars movies or don't look at Star Wars movies the same way you or I do might say to themselves, oh gosh, another half hour. Whereas I was like, holy cow, we've got more of this. This is great. Um, so I, I thought that, that he handled this very well. And I, I really look forward to what he's got in the offing for the next, the next trilogy. In which case, we'll have to pot again because we'll have to re rank all of these. Yeah, um, he, did, all right. he did leave J.J. Abrams plateful. I'll say that much. Yeah, There's well, a and, lot and, to solve in the last one, which that's fine. Well, it, it is fine. Fun. I well, we're gonna get to we're gonna get to Force Awakens in a little bit. I know, but um, we'll see. I I 
Well, let's wait until we get to all this as we kind of, as I'm sitting here saying we're talking about The Last Jedi and we're going to be talking about The Last Jedi here again pretty soon. Um, let's jump right into this. Um, the only format here for those of you listening is we're going to be counting down from nine to one, talking about each movie as we can. Um, wherever this goes is where it goes. Um, those of you listening to this, there will be a written piece at WFNY. Please check out waitingfornextyear.com. Find the post. Leave your rankings. Debate us. Uh, we'll be happy to debate them with you uh, in our discussion forum. That being said, I do want to say this before we get started, Jake, and I, I don't know if you feel the same way. As I was sort of kind of going through the rankings today, deciding whether or not I was going to re-rank or shuffle or move, the one thing that struck me is I have some movies that I believe could swap places at any time. Not because I'm wishy-washy, because I like them kind of the same, but for different reasons. Did, do you feel that way about any of these movies that we're going to be talking about? Yeah, I had a really tough time in the middle um, and the end figuring out which ones. And th these are interchangeable. I feel pretty good about my top three, but the middle and end ones were, were tough. And, and like you said, you can argue – if you pick like a category to put these in as, as in terms of uh, plot line or character development type of things, you could, you could re-rank them accordingly. Um, I feel pretty good about the ones that were at the top uh, holding their ground in most of those categories. But I agree, there, there's some swapping that can be done there. All right. Well, here we go. I'm going to let you start things off. Number nine, Jake Burns. Kick it off, man. What's your number nine? Oh, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm holding my ground that the Phantom Menace is number nine for me. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I, I got to jump in just real quick because this is the one I think we're going to agree with a couple. I'm on board with you. My number nine, the Phantom Menace. Go. Yes. Tell me why. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it's probably the last time we're going to agree tonight, but we got one. All right. Yeah, no, I think I get what they were trying to do. It is a story that appeals to the kids. You mute it out, buddy, if you can't. I've got you muted out for some reason. I don't know if you swipe. So there you go. You there? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Right. You literally you, you you cut out right when you started to talk about it, so I got nothing. Sorry, I was. She, no, cool. she Facetime me, so I'm going to send her a text real quick. Can you you can edit this out, right? Yeah, yeah. Don't never worry about that. I can edit it all out. Okay. All right. I'm getting angry texts because she didn't know I was podcasting. Anyway, because um, <laughs> I literally I literally ignored it. Um, <laughs> no. So I think the Phantom Menace, man. I get what they were trying to do. They're obviously trying to build a new generation of Star Wars fans, attacking the kid angle with the podcast or that we have yeah, with the with the uh, pod racing and, and Jar Jar Binks. I thought that I just felt it's just, it hasn't aged well. It feels, um, it just, it just felt too childish light in nature. So I wasn't a big fan. I, I love obviously the, the, the huge lightsaber battle at the end. I think everybody has enjoyed that. Oh, yeah. um, we'll talk about where that might rank in the grand scheme of things, how choreographed it was, but the, you know, the, the duel of the fates, um, all of that was pretty cool, but in general, it just it has the weakest overall feel, storyline, um, importance in the whole arc of things for, for me to rank it anywhere above the, 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 the very end. What do you think? Yeah, I, I agree 100%. The funny thing is, is I enjoyed some of the characters. I, I um, Liam Neeson, I thought, no, Qui-Gon Jinn, I thought was fantastic in that role. I, there were some parts about his character that I didn't like. Um, but I, I bought totally into his character. I thought Ewan McGregor was a great cast move for, for Obi-Wan. And I think through those three movies, the one guy that kind of holds everything together is Ewan McGregor. I kind of look at Ewan McGregor a lot the same way as I do Adam Driver in that he's a phenomenal actor who, who clearly, um, acting chops-wise, uh, did the job. So I, I really liked him in this. I, actually, the fact that, that Ewan McGregor, um, that end scene that you mentioned, that lightsaber duel, which is, to me, one of the top five, six, seven scenes in, in all the Star Wars movies. Um, yeah. I buy that scene because of him. Him getting trapped, him not being able to help. You kind of saw what was going to come, uh, and he really made that movie to me. The funny thing about this movie, and we can get into the variety of reasons why we have it number nine. You know, we can talk about Jar Jar. We can talk about kind of, I, I had to watch this movie multiple times because I really didn't get it. Like I didn't get the trade Federation stuff at first and I, I couldn't figure out who was on whose side. And maybe that was the point, but the whole idea of this first movie being so muddled, i um, really struggled with that. Yeah. Um, Darth Maul getting 
what and by the way if you haven't seen this movie and i'm spoiling it for you well i mean come on it's 99 give it a break um darth maul dying in this movie i mean are you kidding me gosh how do you kill that character sorry yeah, uh, i rank it, i rank him up there with snoke's death in terms of what could have been oh yeah I, oh man i well and the thing to me and what they ended up losing and we'll probably get into this in the next couple is they lost a believable lightsaber duelist because everybody else was either a cgi robot or uh, i forget who they had um, what was the guy's name um gosh i'm gonna get killed christopher lee who i think when he did this movie uh was 79 80 years old no one's buying him as taking on yoda I, I i just oh gosh anyway so so yeah i mean it started, it kicked off this trilogy that takes a lot of heat. And, you know, as my son is listening to me, my son who's 15, I'm sure he's disagreeing with me, valiantly disagreeing with me. But, um, yeah, I, there's so much wrong with this movie that I didn't buy. Um, I really wanted Anakin to be the center of this. We wanted to see kind of the th fundamental roots of, of Anakin Skywalker going from the Lukish character to Darth Vader. Uh, and, and we didn't get to him until 45 minutes into the movie. And, uh, you know, again, we can talk about the casting of both Anakins. Um, it did feel a lot like a kid movie. I did like Jake Lloyd in this movie, actually. Um, but at the end of the day, there wasn't enough of that storyline uh, to get me to buy into all this other Federation stuff and um, trying to figure out the, the, the where Palpatine fits into all this. And, and it was just a very strange, strange movie where I think they were trying to keep I don't know. It's just a strange movie to me it's a, from it's the get-go. It's a tough one to start with. I mean, it just it didn't have the balance of the kitty fun with with the, the adult necessary parts that the you know the the diehards crave. So yeah, it's a safe nine for us. I'm glad this might be the only one we agree on. I'm glad we got one. <laughs> well, I just you know, with the with the people that they cast in this movie, um, from you know, like I mentioned, Liam Neeson, Ewan McGregor to Natalie Portman. Uh, who already at that point had been up for an Oscar. You've got, um, you know, and then you've got Samuel L. Jackson making an appearance in this movie. I just think that there could have been so much more. Uh, I've got to be honest with you. I tried to watch this movie yesterday with my son. I think I made it through 45 minutes, maybe an hour before I fell asleep. Uh, it doesn't happen often when I'm watching a Star Wars movie. So Phantom Menace actually was eight prior to me falling asleep. Got bumped down to nine. So that's... Thank my sleep, Jake, for why it came in at yes. number nine. <laughs> All right, number eight. So let's let's hear let's hear your number eight then. Let's, number eight. I'm not going up. far. This was my former number nine, uh, and that's Attack of the Clones. Ah. I actually, for a lot of reasons, hate this movie more than than I hate F Phantom Menace. Okay, okay. <laughs> the, the, I'm with you. I he, Attack of the Clones is my number seven. <laughs> I. Uh, I, I, I don't know where you'll stand on this one, but my number eight is Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi. All right, I'm going to hold off on where I have Return of the Jedi. It's not far. We're getting there. Um, let, let's, yep, talk, yep, yep, yep. let's talk a little, since you got Attack of the Clones at, at seven, let's go ahead and knock this one out. Yep. Um, I, I think that for me, um, that muddled plot that I mentioned in Phantom Menace gets even more muddled to me in an eight. I think figuring out the difference between this growing empire and figuring out who all of these weird new characters that are come, come flying into this um, really offset for me the great scenes that are in this movie. Cause there are several really cool scenes uh, in this, but I mean, you've got, um, you've got Anakin now played by Hayden Christensen. And I just think, in any of the Star Wars movies, Jar Jar Banks included, like I just cannot stand Hayden Christensen at all in any of these movies. I don't buy it. Um, I don't yeah, buy it. It was such a hard role to play. That conflict role, it was hard. I, I can't say I didn't like him. I can't say I was like going to remember Hayden Christensen's performance forever either. So I'm I'm in the lower part of that spectrum. I'm not quite as low on him as you are, but I mean. They needed somebody better. I'll agree with that. For such a role that you could, you needed to feel the internal tear, and I never felt that. As Look, I, I mean, to. now we have Adam Driver to compare it to. Yeah, which and, is just night and day. 
I, I, but, and that's, and that's where the, and we're talking about Darth Vader here. We're talking about, um, for, for us being Star Wars fans, the pantheon of evil, but finding out later in Return of the Jedi that he was fighting the light side and you have this massive balance. Um, and we just didn't get to me this, we got really a pouty kid through this whole thing who didn't really convey the anger enough. However, however, um, you have Christopher Lee's character, Count Dooku, fighting Yoda. We get to see Yoda fight in a lightsaber battle for the first time. I did love that. Um, I just, it, to me, it seemed like the plot was way over the head of any kid who would want to see it. Um, yeah. But I did, but but in between it, and then of course the gladiator scene, I kind of like that. To me, what killed this movie was the fact that it was driven by CGI. We had to buy into a seventy-nine-year-old guy flipping around with a lightsaber. Um, the animals, um, had they done a gladiator scene without the animals, I, I, I would have liked it a lot better. Um, yeah, and I, I did, that. I did like the the Jango Fett, um, Boba Fett creation. We did get introduced to the clones in this movie. Again, there were parts of it that I liked, but it was so loosely held together. That's just my thoughts. I'm sorry, I kind of dominated this side of Attack of the Clones. Your thoughts? No, I'm you had sure. it ranked a little higher than me. Yeah, I, I just had it above Return of the Jedi, um, partly because of. I'm just a staunch hater of the teddy bears and what the, the Ewoks can do. So <laughs> it's hard for me. I do agree that they, they did a little bit too, too much CGI with the gladiator stuff. Um, it, it was way too much love scene stuff between <laughs> Palpatine or sorry, between. Pat and <laughs> oh, I like that better. I like that better. <laughs> That's funny actually. Um, no, it, it, it just, I don't know. I I didn't leave the theater. I remember being young. I didn't leave the theater like loving that. We didn't get enough lightsaber duels. Um, it was it was too heavily focused on Padme and Anakin and the the scene on, um, you know, her home planet. I'm drawing a blank right now. We get into these. I can remember them when we're not Naboo. when I'm talking. Yeah, um, they go back to Naboo. Naboo. Just, yeah, yeah. It's just it was just it was too much. And but again, it it carried the storyline. It's it's something I'm I, I would love to to be able like someday you said to bring your son on and talk to him about from a younger generation standpoint. Um, but it's it just not, not, not good enough to where it needed to be. So it, it, it's not terrible, but it doesn't hold weight compared to the ones that we have in front of it. Okay. So, so you already mentioned your number seven was attack of the clones and you mentioned your number eight was return of the Jedi. Um, so I'm going to hop into my number seven. Uh, my number seven is, and this is going to kill my son. Uh, my number seven is Revenge of the Sith. Ah, okay. Let's have that talk. Hold on a second here. Let me see where I had it. I made a fancy note in my iPhone today. I have Revenge of the Sith up at fifth. I, okay. I, I enjoyed Revenge of the Sith only the end and how they transformed him to Vader. That last I, hour. That last yeah. hour. It was, was powerful stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and let me just say this. I thought to me, um, five, six, seven, the next three movies that I'm going to talk about, um, uh, let's say six and seven. Six and seven are interchangeable. Um, five to me is kind of my outlier here, and we'll get to that. But I do want to say that that I, I did play around with Revenge of the Sith. I kind of slid it up a little higher to see how I felt about it. Um, so you having it fifth is by no means a stretch to me. I thought the ending of the conflict in this movie was fantastic. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's – that's. I think let – me, let me look at where I have the, – the one I have behind it, which you and I might get into a debate because we've talked about this, is I have Sith fifth and then I – or sorry, sixth I have The Force Awakens. So I have it behind Sith. Okay. Um, though, but again, I think that this four, five, six for me is inter- – is, Sorry, three, four, five is relatively interchangeable. Well, I so it is it, four, five, six. I'm an idiot. Four, five, it, six. It, well, I, what we'll do here, guys, is once we get up to five, we'll run down um, nine, eight, seven, and six again. So if you're getting confused by all these numbers, um, we'll we'll kind of clear them up for you. Um, so again, just to talk a little bit about, I think I want to save the Revenge of the Sith discussion for when you get to it at five. Um, I do want to talk about the things that kind of annoyed me about the movie. Um, I, I again, I thought the one thing it had going for it is the plot was was we we knew about the emperor at this point very clear. Um, we had a clear empire at this point. We we had a lot of the old music going on. Um, the thing that killed it for me 
I thought everybody played their roles fantastic. I think that the two things that killed it for me, um, I thought that um, having, oh gosh, I cannot believe I can't think of the, I can't think. Um, hold on, I'm going to cut this out. Hey, James, the robot. The robot, spinny lightsabers. General Grievous? Yeah. I Listen, so this is where – so throughout the series of these movies, it was hard for me to figure out who I was supposed to root against as the bad guy. Yeah. You have Dooku and you have Grievous and you have – at one point you have Darth Maul who was the best of all of them. You have the Emperor up there and you have Anakin sort of skirting the line. Now we've got the CGI Grievous. I actually liked Grievous. Had Grievous been the bad guy from the get-go, clearly the bad guy, but it seemed like he was just some sort of robot that was going to get killed sooner or later. Um, he, to me, could have been a really believable bad guy, having you know multiple arms that could spin lightsabers like that. Uh, but you know, they had him as sort of this rickety robot. He's coughing and hacking out oil. It looked like uh, some cartoon version of some like funny movie with a broken down rickety robot. I, I that was part of my problem. Um, and again. I didn't buy Anakin until the uh, until he went straight evil. I didn't buy him. I just didn't yeah. buy it. So again, watching him sort of whine and balance his way, trying to figure out how to how to you know maybe he can be with 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 Padme. Maybe he's gonna turn evil, and we all know he's gonna turn evil. He just didn't sell me at any level on any of that. So by the time we got to the last hour, I loved the last hour, but I hated the lead up to it so much um, that. I just didn't buy into it. I will say this. I am so saddened. I love the clones. And this is where my son and I will agree. Um, especially having watched some of the Clone Wars with my son. The thing that sucks for me is I think there's so much there that they could do with these clones. With one of them eventually turning into Boba Fett. And I think there's so much they could have done there that could have been better. Um, which may be the problem. And who knows? Maybe we'll get – maybe this will be the trilogy – I don't know, but you know, I, maybe we'll get there with some other movies. But that's it. Kind of left me a little hanging, and, and and that's why I had to put Revenge of the Sith seventh on my list. So you have uh, um, nine, eight, so, seven, six. So nine, eight, seven, six, nine, Phantom Menace, eight, Attack of the Clones, seven, Re Revenge of the Sith, and then of course six, which I don't think I've mentioned yet, is Return of the Jedi, which we can talk about in a second, but. Yeah. So I've got the Talk prequel. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I've got the prequel um, all at the bottom of my list, and 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 like I said, I think Revenge of the Sith is one of those that for me, you could bounce up to five, maybe four. Um, although you're going to agree with, you're going to totally get, you're going to run me over with a car when I tell you what my five is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that I in know. a second. Um, we're gonna, uh, but but for uh, go ahead and start with Return of the Jedi because I, I have a unique take for you. Uh, while I even have it this high, because I could see people sliding it even lower than this. Um, and when I say lower, I mean down to seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I just felt like it was a movie that could have been so much better. It it obviously I get the point of it. I get where it was going. The script understood it all. I don't think they needed to include the Ewoks. I get. I, I mean. There's always a part of me that understands that they're trying to appeal to the kids, but there has to be a sense of believability somewhere. And I just don't understand how them hitting rocks, you know, hitting, hitting, hitting them with, the, I, you know, we, this, I just, just a, the, it's so silly. The logs <laughs> coming together to take out those, those little yeah. walkers is just the best. <laughs> it's just too much. And it's just Star Wars. And in a way, it's okay because it is that way. But like, I just, that's what I like about the new movies is, they have a little bit more, or not even, I think it's a lot of it more, not that it's perfect, but about what the destruction can be for, for you know, the First Order and, and all of those things. So Return of the Jedi, like, the ending with, with Darth and, and Luke, it, it felt okay. I thought they, they there could have been more between those two before that battle. Um, well, the, the problem for me with that battle is the best lightsaber battle between the two happened in Empire Strikes Back. Oh, of so, course. And so, it, I'll say this too. The thing I've always found interesting about depictions of Darth Vader and what I'll talk about later in Rogue One is that he just, in the prequels, and I understand it was the actor or the suit at the time, he just seems so stiff and rigid. Mm -hmm, yeah. and, and I know he's mostly robotic. I get that. But there's a part of him that wants you to think, like, this guy is really freaking B.A. Like, this yeah. guy is awesome. And you didn't feel that. You felt He just felt so stiff and rigid. That there's no way he can move the way he necessarily needed to move 
And that's like the, there was a glimpse though in um, the Empire Strikes Back where he goes to chopping Luke's hand off and he starts to really move like holy crap like that's the that's the evil guy when, when luke scary. hits him with the lightsaber i think in the shoulder yeah. um and vader gets pissed in yeah. empire and we're we're way ahead of ourselves um yeah. yeah that that we get to see a whole new side of darth vader that that goes far beyond um anything we had seen up to this point um yeah, i'm sure we'll talk just, about rogue one wanted, in a second but yeah yeah i just wanted that battle at the end to be a little bit more like this is as cool as it can. That, that that scene should have been the scene. It should have made me feel the way I felt in the chamber scene um, in, in, the, in The Last Jedi. And it should have made me feel the way I felt at the end of Rogue One when you, you see like full on Darth Vader holding people against the ceiling. Like that's chills type thing. I should have felt that way. And I, I get it. It was, it, was, it was a tough time to do those sorts of things. But like you said, the Empire's scene – um, in terms of the lights, it shouldn't have been better. It just it should have it should have it should have been improved in in the Return of the Jedi, and I didn't get that. And I think that's what, a little bit of what left me um, just a feeling a little bit empty. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Well, and I think part of this um, is kind of the same problem I think I had in in the prequel is you know I think had the Emperor been built up a lot better in the original three movie. Um, I think this becomes a lot better because you have a situation where at the end you have Darth Vader, who is the main bad guy, turning good. And, um, you know, I didn't really hate the Emperor enough because we hadn't really seen him enough to hate him. You know, you kind of had a couple of scenes in Empire with him for the first time. And then, of course, you have him playing a more bi a bigger role in, in, in Return of the Jedi, but not enough for me to care. Uh, I think inevitably that's a tough thing to kind of get past. Um, yeah. I did like... And I'll, I'll say this too. I'll say this too real quick. The thing I've always found fascinating is that you don't, you don't even know about the emperor i've always found that weird when i rewatch them is that you don't even know who the emperor is after the first one they, you don't even know there's a such a thing right after a new hope and like darth vader is being bullied around in a bit of a sense by tarkin right like it's it's a little it's a right. little weird i don't know like in a new hope when they made it if george lucas had thought it through enough to know that hey i need this emperor because there was no hint of it there was well, no I, idea. I, I think well i think well and that's this is a whole nother discussion but i think while well, george lucas knew about the nine movies that he had planned i honestly don't think he thought it was going past the first one so i i don't the reason why you know we start seeing these stories start growing and i i wonder you know because then you start talking about we'll get the new hope in a minute but you know the luke and leia storyline <laughs> of them eventually being brother and sister i mean they certainly didn't play it like that and while george no. lucas said he held that back from them because he wanted it to be a surprise I think he held it back from them because he didn't think there was going to be a second movie. So, I mean, that's besides. But I think I think those plot lines, taking that out of the first movie, it helps in some ways, but I think it hurts in others. And I think when we get to that um, that penultimate scene in, in, in um, Return of the Jedi um, where, where Darth Vader does shift to the, to the light. I think the hurt for me is that him throwing – and listen, listen, um, the the – 11-year-old kid that saw that, that got taken out of school to go see that. Um, but I saw that movie. I There was nothing better. Like, I totally understand why my son loves the prequels. Um, there was nothing better than seeing Darth Vader throw the Emperor down that shaft. Um, looking back, as I started getting older, there were parts of that movie I just I have a hard time getting past. Um, you know, but the, the beginning scene was fantastic with Jabba Hutt. I thought it was the best part of the entire movie. That whole, like, let's get, it was kind of like a, a heist movie. them trying to steal Han Solo. Yeah. Um, I like that too. I was, you know, I, I, yeah, but I'll, you know, then I'll you have say the, this too. I've had a theory about this and we might get off on a tangent, but I talked to my buddy about it is, is what Darth Vader did at the end of return of the Jedi is it similar to what Kylo did in the chambers that are we sure he came back to the light completely or was he doing it with a self-serving purpose? I, I've always, that's... I've always been interested in that. Well, and we'll because never like, know because he dies. Yeah, of course. You know, of I course. Mean... So like, I've always thought, okay, he, he killed the emperor, but did he kill the emperor because he just wanted to save his son and he wanted to rule the galaxy with him. Or did he kill him because he's coming back to the light and I want to make good with my life. I obviously see both sides of it. But it's interesting, you know, because he always talks about you and I. And he's talking about it with Luke when they're walking into, you know, off of Endor. 
you know, we can rule the galaxy together kind of thing. I, like, is that what he is that his purpose for killing the emperor? Because they always, you know, it always ends up that the apprentice kills the emperor and kills the, you know, it seems that way now. Well, I the, guess the, 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 I, the only ahead. reason why I think that we can answer this question is because at the end of that movie, um, we have, you know, at the end of Return of the Jedi, we have, you know, the the Force Ghosts, and we have not Vader standing there, but Anakin, yeah. um, who is aged in the worst possible way from Hayden Christensen. <laughs> 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 um, but um, we have we have uh, Anakin. Well, uh, I wait. Correct me if I'm wrong. But when they redid the movies, wasn't Anakin was wasn't Hayden Christensen? It was, Hayden, the one? It, was, it, it was, and it was <laughs> which actually was to me awkward. makes sense. Which to me makes sense. Does, don't don't... That, that's where his body was when when that time. So, came. anyways, um, we have the Force Ghost standing there, and, and and to me, I think even even Luke alluded to this when he was talking to Kylo. Um, you don't want to kill me now because then you're going to be stuck with me. Um, I kind of sort of think that that what they're trying to say there is because that's the version we see he did turn to the light side. Now, you can make a counter argument that, well, Luke Luke was there when he died, so that's why he's there. I don't I don't know. I don't know. The force gets muddled from prequel to sequel to to the original three, so I don't know. Yeah, it's just interesting. I found myself thinking of that the second time I watched the movie, like this is obviously meant to be a similar sort of thing to what Vader did for Luke as, as Luke was on the, on the cusp of dying. Um, you know, he obviously helped him out now. And I was thinking to myself, you know, is, is this supposed to mirror the entire thing? Maybe this is what Vader would have done if he had not been, you know, in a situation where he was practically on the cusp of death. Um, it did. It did. It was interesting. It, it did feel like Ryan Johnson and last Jedi, which we'll get to, I mean, it did feel like he was trying to cram some homages to both movies, both Empire and Return of the Jedi. Um, so it's possible that this 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 third movie is going in a whole different direction. And you, you could be right. Um, I don't I, I guess my question is, is before I, I want to run through your your bottom four. But um, do Force Ghosts just show up wherever they want? Because Yoda does only show up to Luke, who was there when he died. I I. I don't know. Is this even a big deal? Is Luke going to like show up everywhere in this last movie or not show up anywhere because he died by himself? I, I don't know. I don't know. It seems that they certainly only appear in their most desperate hour. It's right. When they're, when they're at their absolute most confused. Yeah. So um, other yeah, than yeah. other than when Luke comes back and Yoda dies, well, okay, there's the stressful situation and Obi-Wan does show up to tell Luke that um, – Leia is his sister, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know. I I, I don't know. I he, I really feel like these 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 movies, you know, as different people get a hold of them, do different things, and and Lucas, well, that's a whole other story. Well, that's kind of what is interesting is that everybody has their feelings on how it should go. Even even Mark Hamill had yeah. his, his opinion on how he thought Luke should have went. But I, I like that Mark kind of backtracked and said, you know, after I saw the movie, I understand what he was trying to do and. It's it's interesting that it's we want it to be objective, but it is certainly sub subjective to whoever creates it. You know, so we're yeah. gonna fall our opinion upon line. Uh, All right, so so give me your nine eight seven six. I'm gonna roll out my nine nine eight seven six, and then you better start with your fifth because I think that my fifth is gonna cause a commotion. Well, I I think we've already talked about my fifth, but we'll we'll, we'll get I'll okay. So, so let me read through five, and then we'll talk. All right. Um, I went Phantom Menace, and then I went Return of the Jedi and Attack of the Clones at, at six. Um, my fifth was The Force Awakens. Which I haven't gotten to yet. Um, my fifth... Yeah. <sighs> Sorry, man. Rogue One. Yeah, that's okay. That's, I, think, I think it's okay. I think Rogue One is a top five. I think it could be, depending on your view of film... And, and you and I have talked about this at length. It sure. can go up. It can it can go down. Um, but well, I will say artists, this: go ahead. my three, my four, which is Force Awakens, mm -hmm. and my five, Rogue One, and could be interchangeable. For me, when I first made this list, I actually had the last Last Jedi at five, I had Rogue One at four, um, and Force Awakens at three. 
um, having really contemplated Last Jedi and the direction that they're heading in, and I know this is going to piss off half the world because apparently The Last Jedi to some people is the worst movie of all time. Um, to me, Last Jedi is a whole other conversation, which we'll get to, and we've already had a conversation. But, but Rogue One, okay, so let me kind of spell out Rogue One for you, and I, I don't want you to talk about Rogue One at all yet. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm laying down the rule as, as the, the, the host of this podcast for several years. You can't talk about Rogue One until you mention it. Um, I want to say this about Rogue One, and this is what we've talked about. Rogue One, to me, as a, as a standalone movie, which was its intent almost. You know, people kept saying, this is the intent, this is the intent, and then it ends up tying into New Hope. As a standalone movie in the Star Wars universe, and as far as the craft of the filmmaking goes, um, I saw this movie in the theater three times. The first time I saw it, I was left befuddled by the entire thing except for a couple of scenes and I don't want to talk about those scenes because I want you to talk about them the second time I saw it I went with a different idea I just went watching the craft and watching the actors and, and, and how they portrayed everything and, and trying not to be frustrated by the fact that they literally wiped everyone out in that movie um, <laughs> other than a, a couple of characters um, and then the third time I, once I got past all of that, then the third time I went and watched it as a Star Wars movie. And by the end of that third mo time, I, I, the craft of that movie um, just overpowered. It was a, a really well done movie in any stretch of the imagination. Now, here's my only, the only reason why I have it ranked fifth is I do think that when you talk about these movies, and you mentioned this earlier, is that we all bring our own thing to it. I grew up during the original three. Um, the original three, to me, hold a very, very special place. Um, how I ended up putting Return of the Jedi down at six, I'll never know. Um, but So to me, those three movies um, were a big deal to me. Um, Rogue One, it doesn't have, for me, that same emotion. And, and some of that's on purpose. I, I, I think when they made that film, I think they made that film with the intent of maybe having the emotion all settled in what happens to these characters in this one isolated incident, because of course, from this movie, everything else happens. I mean, it does explain some things in the other movies that I think a lot of people had problem with specifically. Why would the death star have a hole in it that someone could shoot a bullet into and destroy? Um, but, but that's beside the point. So for me, the only reason why I have it down so low is because of what it was built for as it's standalone piece. And I think, I think, Jake, me putting it at five says a lot about it because, honestly, to me, it almost needs its own like category. It almost doesn't need to be included in all this. Um, because if you told me today <laughs> that you had it... <laughs> it's, babe, it's fine. <laughs> Can you let her out and pet her so she stops barking? I've got it on. Pet them. I've got a schnauzer. She barks a lot. Oh, I got it. If you told me, if you told me today um, that any type of fan would have this movie ranked in their top one, two, or three, I went with a friend who's 30 years old, and he, coming out of the movie, said it was his favorite. Um, I get it. I totally understand it. And there is a scene in this movie, which to me is the greatest Star Wars scene. Mm, yeah, my favorite, my favorite bar none Star Wars scene is in Rogue One. Um, so I totally understand. Do tell. What is it? What is it? What um, is it? it I mean, the Vader scene that you've already yeah. alluded to. I mean, yeah. to me, we get to see the bad guy being bad i mean yeah. in a way that we've been waiting to see from the start and jake i don't know i went into this movie not knowing about the scene when this I scene no started clue. i had no idea it was going to come i just happy to see vader we saw vader i was ecstatic we saw Grand Moff tarkin i was ecstatic i didn't know people were going to rip on the cgi but this scene of vader oh my gosh yeah no that was as cool it was like the it was like the dessert after a steak dinner man like that it was to me, I'm I'm going to be honest, and I'll and we'll get to the top of ours. But I, I had Rogue One at number two, um, in my in my list, and I, I'm totally with as more of these off, um, you know, out of the I should say standalone movies come out, we should rank them on their own. But 
it, it kind of fit. The thing that makes me want to put it with is it fits in the storyline. It doesn't necessarily include the names we're accustomed to, but it fits. So like the Han Solo movie to me will be a true spinoff because it's just going to tell the story of a character. This told the story of a major part of the plot that everybody needed to know. And it told it in such a way that made you under, it made me understand the rebellion more in that Uh. movie than any other movie combined. If you added them like that movie made me understand the rebellion. It made me understand how they were sourcing all of the Kyber crystal. It was, it was, Dang it, Jim. I'm going to argue this one until I, I can't breathe anymore, man. I, I just love well, I'm that. not going to – and that's the problem. I can't argue with you because I think that the roots of this movie, the fact that it was a gritty – there was some heist to it of them trying to steal something. But at the end of the day, you had these ruffian characters doing bad things to try to make sure the good side won. And, and let's make no bones about it. From – the opening few scenes, the characters in Rogue One are not good characters. I mean, they're the good side. They're the rebels. They're the rebellion. They're the roots of the rebellion, but they're bad characters. I love that. Yeah, and, that, and that's what I like, too, that there are, there are levels to what it takes to be a part of the rebellion and what it took for the – it's not all black and white for the galaxy. There are probably factions of the galaxy that thought that the rebels were on the wrong side of things. Like, that is what – and, and – that's what's interesting is I'm playing Battlefront and the storyline of Battlefront is is that there are people that join the the Empire because they were told lies about the Jedi. That's what I like. It's not all perfectly laid out. It's not all good and bad like you think it is. So these people have done things to get where they need to get. And it was about them coming to understand the necessary sacrifice to keep it going. I'm with you. It sucks that they all died. I've always said that the Force Awakens, if you compared The Force Awakens and Rogue One, that Rogue One's the better movie, but Rey is just so much better than Jen, you know, Jen Arso that yeah. it, 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 it balances it out. But Well, I mean... I don't know, man. It's just, it's really good. The Vader scene, that's where I truly felt like, man, I, I would have a hard time turning the dark side down if that's what I could do. <laughs> the, well, <laughs> I mean, listen, the minute, the minute at the tail end of that, and I just want to take note, a year ago today, I saw it for the second time with my daughter and my son. And we're sitting in the movie at 1230. We saw it early afternoon. And as we're sitting in the movie theater, this is no joke. My daughter and I are sitting there. I've got my phone out. And I get a, te- I get a, a, a news piece that said Carrie Fisher passed away. Literally while we're sitting in the movie theater. And my daughter hadn't seen the movie yet. So she didn't know how it was going to end. So we're sitting there. and We're sniveling a little bit. And so the, the second that that end scene... Those, those end scenes start and you realize where you're sitting. You realize that you're sitting at the beginning of A New Hope, which really started off all of these movies. Yeah. The minute you realize that, it was an amazing, I was watching my kids especially, an amazing moment. Um, and then that Vader scene. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but to have Carrie Fisher at the tail end of that movie, and that movie to be out when she passed away in real life, I mean, to me, and I know the CGI took a lot of hit. Like, the movie was just so well put together. And I do feel like they added some of that end on um, for that specific reason. But the movie ends, of course, you know, with that Carrie Fisher scene. But that end scene of Vader after he literally wipes through everything and he's kind of standing there at that open part of the, um, the hull of the ship. I mean, you're thinking to yourself, man, now it starts. Like, how perfect is this? Um, so, yeah. anyways, yep, yep, yep. Um, that's just my it's two good. cents. It's good. I, 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 I get where people come at it with your angle. Um, I think you, you know, the people on your side of the fence with it understand where we're coming from. It's just a matter of what you prefer. Um, you know, so I'm with it both ways. I put, uh, we'll keep going here. I put, um, so my top four, do you want to just do top four? We're getting a little crunched on time. And yeah, let's do top four. Let's do top here. four here. Um, go ahead. You, you run through your top four. I'll run through mine. Cool. Cool. I, so I did number one, the empire strikes back. I just don't think unless, they do something wild with uh, with nine. I'm not sure that they can top it. Um, just in terms of the moment, how great it was in the moment for those people, the surprise of all surprises, which was a benefit of the time period. But nonetheless, it's just it was so well acted and the scene, the scenery was beautiful. A lot of different things that there there, there wasn't so there wasn't a bad. So you're taking a, a mid movie, mm-hmm. taking a mid movie of a trilogy. 
the one that has to suck because you can't end on a good note, right? And you don't have a bad scene. You have the Dagobah scenes, which are fantastic. Uh, you have the Hoth scene, which is fantastic, including the at at introduction and the rebels getting wiped out. Mm -hmm. You have, um, you of course have the whole Han Solo stuff in Cloud City. All of these new characters getting introduced all over the place, including Yoda, including um, um, Lando Calrissian. You have uh, this love story developing, and then you have this amazing. By the way, it was my number one too. See, we agree on one and nine. Um, and then you <laughs> have this important. Yeah, you have this amazing scene where and, and listen, I saw the movie in the movie theater and there was no Twitter and there was no social media. Nobody knew this was coming. At least I didn't. I mean, I was just a dumb kid. I'm sitting in the movie theater and Darth Vader, the baddest of the bad, who just cut off this kid's hand, says, I'm your father. Holy crap, in a world today where there are no surprises. You want to talk about rocking the freaking world? That rocked my freaking I'm still struggling with that. How's that possible? How can Darth <laughs> Vader awesome. be Luke Skywalker's father? I know, and that's what's wild is that as kids grow up, like kids who were born in the 80s grew up, they just heard the phrase, Luke, I am your father, and they, they, they already knew. So there was no hiding it. It was only original for those folks. But, yeah, man, it's just it's, it's untoppable. Um Go to what, number two. It, I can't say it's on top of. I can't say it's on top of. It could yeah. be top, but it's just it's it's a really great film. Um, uh, then I went to Rogue One, which we talked about. Yep. Then I went my three four, which is gets a little dicey, which might compare to your two three. I went the Last Jedi, then A New Hope. Whoa, 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 um, whoa, whoa! There's our yeah. argument. All right, so hold on. Let me give you my 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 one two three four. Um, Empire Strikes Back, number one. New Hope, number two. And I'll be honest with you, those interchange for me. Um, Empire is just such a good movie, though, and I'll explain New Hope when we get to it. Last Jedi, number three, which I thought was going to be a surprise, but you had it number two. Way to beat me there. And, of course, Fork Awa Force Awakens, number four. All right. Talk to me about Last Jedi. Why do you have it number two? Um, well, it's three for me. Cause oh, I'm, three. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a wild man. That's right. Rogue One was two. No. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, no, it's cool. I don't know. It's just a feeling I get. There's no right or wrong here. I can't. You could talk me into why the New Hope needs to be higher. Um, I, I don't. I don't really have a great answer. I just. I just loved what the Last Jedi did, taking risks. Um, a New Hope is is really good. I just wish we would have known a little bit more. I. I just. I remember walking away from that one the first time, having known what I know about things from a forward standpoint in terms of knowing who Luke's father is and all that, just thinking like we didn't, I didn't feel Vader was tough enough. Um, Luke was trained so fast. Like there were just a lot of things that, that I left. That's my like, only Luke struggle went. with empire strikes back. Yeah. Is, is he literally doesn't get trained, but Ray got trained a lot faster than he did. So, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> So there's there's debatable stuff and all that. A New Hope was really good, man. There's there's no for the time period in which it came out, the first movie in a in a major what turns into a major you know trilogy. I could I could sway both ways. I'm a I'm a little bit of a snob on these. The act you know the, the how things went in the movie always bothered me. Just like the fighting and different different little stiff parts of the script that were a little weird to me. But it, it's great. It, this is well, like picking between the best of the best. So it gets uh, I, well, and, and, and you have to realize that for me, and, and and I know you understand what I'm saying, but but yeah. for me, the 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 interesting piece to a new hope is 1977. There was nothing yeah. like it out there. Yeah. This was a story um, that there were so many things about it that were wondrous, including the way that they did everything um, um, using using you know, I mean, coming at it from not having CGI at the time, you know, from the company that eventually would would become famous for it. I mean, I think that that A New Hope just brought to the equation just so much that hadn't been there before. Um, it started this legacy off, which is why sometimes I have it at number one ahead of Empire. It's the story is so simple. The yeah. story's it's just such a simple bad guy versus good guy story that that turns into this magnificent universe that we've been talking about now for for two and a half hours over the past two weeks mm -hmm. um that to me that you have to have new hope somewhere in the top just because without it none of this happens yeah for sure i uh, I, I think unfortunately i get a little too tied to my emotions and how much i, I enjoyed watching it which is probably not the best way to look at cinema but that's that's where i get caught a little bit but i'm with you man. Well, you, can't, you can't go wrong to be fair that. 
I mean, I think that watching it now, I mean, listen, I still watch it now. I'm still enthralled with it. But watching it now, there is a little less to it because you you watch, you know, Vader fighting Obi-Wan in, in, in A New Hope. And um, while it's quaint and wonderful, I mean, you, you, you flash backwards in time, theoretically, and you watch Obi-Wan um, and Qui-Gon Jinn fighting Darth Maul in this amazing scene with this amazing, like, two-sided lightsaber with, you know, this amazing, this amazing... Uh, who, who did all of the the lightsaber battles through the first tri or for the for the the prequels? Yeah. I, um, I can't remember the guy's I name. I just wanted in my mind like that the verbal confrontation between Obi Wan and, and and Darth. I it, with how much emotion went into the first fight. You know when 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 Obi Wan obviously takes him down and turns him into Vader. Like there should have been so much more anger and, and emotion from Vader than we actually ended up. Uh, especially with Alec Guinness in that, in that, you know, yeah. there could have been so much more there. Yeah. Um, and I, it's that. like you said that when that movie was made, they didn't know they were going to backtrack into prequels. And it, there's, there's obviously perfectly logical reasons why it didn't happen that way. It's yeah. just something you want, but you can't have there. All right. The only movie we haven't talked about yet. Let's just get into it really quick is force awakens. We talked about the last Jedi, last Jedi at the beginning of this. We talked about it last week. You want to hear our thoughts on the last Jedi tune in then i think the next movie one we'll probably talk about it again i'm going to go see it a third time um we can talk about it a little more but i want to talk about the force awakens and really i just want to kind of begin and end with this um the force awakens takes a lot of heat because it really follows in the new hope path we don't really we get introduced to a bunch of new characters but at the end of the day it's a new hope part two same movie let's just pepper some of these other characters in um it takes a lot of heat for that which is exactly why i love it I love it because it almost felt like we needed that to happen after the prequels just because the prequels took such a big hit. We needed to be reintroduced to kind of the, the, the I don't really know how to describe it, maybe the fantasy of that first, um, that, the first trilogy. Uh, so that's why I have The Force Awakens in my top five. I know a lot of people have it out. Um, what are, we've never talked about Force Awakens. What are your thoughts about Abrams? Uh, movie. I, I, yeah, in, in a way that I left Revenge of the Sith thinking I would never see another Star Wars movie, I kind of think it would equate in a smaller sense to your first viewing of A New Hope. Like, to me, it was just, it was so fascinating to see them reprise Han Solo and bring him back. And I mean, tell was, me you didn't was, pop. Tell uh, me you didn't pop when you saw the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. I. When you saw the Millennium yeah, Falcon the first time. Think, yeah, and I still don't think The Last Jedi did enough of that nostalgic stuff. They had some of it with the R2 scene um, yeah. and he, when he was in the Falcon, but they could have they could have popped a little more nostalgic stuff. But yeah, I'm with you. When they walk onto the ship and you finally see him, him and Chewie uh, and we're you know, home. the Jedi and all uh. that, it's, it's all real. It's not, you know, it's 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 cool. They did, they did well. The Force Awakens, it, it was like, it was a movie I don't think they could have missed on. Like they could have done it whatever way they wanted to do it, and I'm not sure they could have missed on it. Um, George Lucas, somewhere, my friend, and I love George Lucas. George, don't take this the wrong way because I know you're going to listen to this podcast. Um, he's he's standing somewhere right now, going, "Hold my beer." Sorry, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. I'm with you, man. Cheers, George. <laughs> it's it's uh, it was good. It was really good. I, I liked it. Um, no, I mean, it just was. It was just good. You know what I mean? It wasn't great. It wasn't bad. It was just. It, it felt right, but it doesn't feel like it took the necessary risks to be in that top like four, three, or four to me. All right. Well, let's wrap things up there. I do want to say a couple of things here. I think the one thing about this, and we'll maybe revisit this every couple a couple times a year. Uh, maybe we'll revisit it. You know, as we start getting closer to the solo story that's coming out next December. Um, I think. Maybe a I think year it comes from out the summer, actually. Does it? I feel like it no. comes out in the summer. I could be wrong, though. No, it would make sense. But man, that would leave a long time between that. Well, we'll have to check it out. I know it's done or close to being done. Yeah. Um, I think um, at some point, I, now I want to get away from Star Wars the next time. The next podcast that Jake and I do, it's going to be about the Cleveland Browns. Deal with it. Whether it's <laughs> this week before the last game or after the last game. Um, I want it to be before the last game because I do want to talk about you, Jackson. I'm not sure we're going to get a chance to do that if we wait till after the last game. Um, but, but I, I do, I do want to, I do want to come back at some point, talk top ten characters, or talk about your favorite characters. Um, and I do want to say, um, 
Uh, I do want to at some point get into a Rogue One with you and, and Gage will, perhaps what we can do here um, on air is at some point, I know Gage will wanted to be involved in this and then Corey Barnes, I think we had an uh, off offsite discussion about this. I think what we ought to do, and this is just me, is we need to create a grid, a top nine grid. Um, and what we'll do is we'll post it on our site, WFNY. And, and let's maybe keep doing these with you and I directing some other people and seeing what they think about the top nine. That way you and I can still have at it because I'm not going to lie to you. You got to have new hope in top two. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, we're doing that now. We're jumping but, down each other's <laughs> lists. All right. On that note, ladies and gentlemen. No. <laughs> no, that's good, man. I, I do. I, I can be told I'm wrong on a new hope and I have no problem with saying you're right. So I'm with you. Well, at the end of the day, I think, um, minus some stuff in those prequels, which I still like probably more than most. I think we're talking about nine, a, a storyline uh, that really can't be matched. Think about this. 40 years this story's been in our lifetime. How old are you, Jake? I am 28. 28, 28-year-old. Dude's 20 years younger than me. Not quite. Not quite. Not quite. So we got a 28-year-old. I could have had my 15-year-old son sitting here, my 13-year-old daughter. My daughter cried a year ago today when Carrie Fisher passed away. I mean, that's a story that's worth talking about for more than two and a half hours. So with that being said, Jake Burns, podcast number two. Uh, you're going to be in my net. Well, no, rumor has it that Gage Will is going to be joining me in a podcast later tonight talking Cleveland Indians. But Jake, my friend, it's been real. You know what I think? Here's what I think. I think – the next podcast that we do that's not Browns or Indians or whatever we end up talking about, but the next non-sports podcast, I think you need to host it. Let's do it. I'm into it. I'll host it. Uh, I'll throw you all the questions, and, and we'll, uh, maybe we can do that on the Indians. I'll throw my, my less, less knowledgeable uh, mind about the Indians. I'd love to throw some questions at you. You engage, actually, if we can get, a, get all three of us. Well, supposedly Mike Hattery, but you know. Yeah, if he can cut around some it's, time for us, the, the it's busy. Star. I who knew law school busy? Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, on that note, like we're gonna time. close things up. This is when the Star Wars music plays in the background. Not really, because then we have to pay somebody something. Uh thanks for joining us. Top nine Star Wars movies. Yeah, we didn't even talk about the cartoons. Uh, that's for another day. Another day. All right, we'll see you next time. All right, buddy.